welcome to our video tutorial for this retro 70s cat bandana that you can see metal by modeling here so we hope you enjoy it please like share and subscribe and we hope to see you soon thanks bye okay so to make this 70s retro crochet bandana you'll need yarn in around five colors so I'm using five colors you can use four you could use six you could use you know more or less um, all of my yarns are acrylic or acrylic wool blend and they're all about a three weight okay so if you want a similar size bandana to what I'm going to get um, for a you know kind of a standard cat size then you know five colors is probably where it's at but you know if you've got a finer weight yarn you might want to use six colors or even more if you've got a heavier weight yarn than what I'm using you might only need four colors okay so lots of creativity for you there I'm going with these sort of super retro color palette um, also it's a great scrap yarn project so I've got this tiny little scrap for the center and then I'm going to build out with with these balls that are, are partially used okay then you'll need a crochet hook to suit your yarn and I'm going with three and a half millimeters for my yarns a pair of scissors to snip your yarn you'll need a darning needle to weave in your ends and an optional tape measure to take a measurement from your cat's neck circumference if your cat won't let you do that or you don't have the cat with you or for any other reason it's only optional to have an accurate measurement okay for this for this project it's a tie up bandana so as long as you allow enough um, length on your ties working with a ballpark neck circumference you know it's going to work out fine okay you just need to make sure that you are allowing enough length on your ties to tie a bow or a knot and fit your cat's neck circumference. Now I'll include a guide to standard cat sizes in the description box below so you can work from that. And uh, let's move on to the stitches and techniques that you'll need. Okay, so here's a couple that I have made before and as you can see I'm sort of sticking with the, you know, 70s color palette. Um, yeah, I kind of like that. I think it's super cool retro. So you can see from this that it's we're just making a granny triangle okay with a just a slight variation along the neckline and adding the ties of course so to make this and it's a great project if you're just learning how to crochet and you want a quick project just to practice with then this is it's it's perfect and also if you've just got a bit of scrap yarn lying around it's also perfect so you'll need to know how to make a magic ring or equivalent uh, i'll speak to that in a moment uh, you'll need to make a chain know how to make a chain how to double crochet in this neckline area I'm adding half double crochets and single crochets just to give this flattened effect across the neckline because with these granny triangles the you get a bit of an arc along the side so we just want to flatten that out so it sits slightly better under the neckline to make the ties you'll need to know how to create a chain and then slip stitch down their length and then from there it's it's really a matter of weaving in your ends and tidying up your project and I'll show you how I change color in a really simple way if you have a different way you know absolutely go ahead and use your way I'll just show you the simple way that I change I change uh, change color so um, yeah that's pretty much it and it's really quick to work up it's fun you know to create the different color schemes with these bandanas and like I said I love a bit of retro so you know it's kind of cool so let's get started okay so take your color one your central color and actually just to give you an idea how we build this if you've never made a granny triangle before we'll start in the center here and we'll just work our way outwards okay and then uh, you know we we create the ties from there okay so take your central color and make a magic ring now you can make a magic ring however you make it but otherwise, if you're familiar with uh, making a ring using the chain method, so chaining four, slip stitch into the first chain and creating your little ring that way, then absolutely, you know, go ahead and do that as well. Either, either, either option is fine for this, for this project. So I've got my magic ring and I'm going to chain three and that will count as my first double crochet. Then I'm going to place two more double crochets, one and two into the into the ring I'm going to chain three here and then I'm just going to repeat this first set so I'm going to place 
three more double crochets just remember the chain counts so three more double crochets into the ring one two and three chain three and then we're going to do that one more time so for this first round one more set of three double crochets into your ring one two and three okay now close your ring here and then you're going to chain your three to get across to the where you started and you're going to slip stitch into the top of the chain okay so into the third chain try and get two loops if you can and make a slip stitch to join and that's your round one so we've got you can see we've got the kind of the start of a little triangle already now to move on to round uh, round two we're going to slip stitch into that first stitch so the first double crochet that we made we're going to slip stitch into there we've already slip stitched into the chain which is the top of the f you know first stitch into the stop the top of the second double crochet or what which is actually our first double crochet technically and then into the third double crochet as well and then we're going to slip stitch into the first three chain space but we're not going to finish our slip stitch with this color one okay we're going to move on to color two and we're going to finish our slip stitch with color two okay and that's how I change color here now you could if you've got a different way that you want to do it then absolutely go ahead you know no problem at all now you'll chain your three so you'll see quite quickly what starts to emerge is a repeating pattern now if you need to just tighten those ends then please do and you'll place two more and you might have to work around your tails just a little bit two more double crochets into that chain space so that gives us our first little set of three now I just go back and I tighten my tail ends here and then you can cut off I only had a small length of yarn so mine is already you know already kind of cut off but you can cut off your first color now just make sure you you know you're cutting the right strand and so we've placed in that first chain space we've placed our set of three double crochets we're going to chain three just as we did in round one and then in that same chain space we're going to place three double crochets one and two and three chaining our three to get across to the next chain space actually sorry chaining two just chaining two so it's only in the corners that we're chaining three forgive me so chaining two and then in our next chain space in our next chain space three double crochets one two and three and chain three we're working in a corner space three double crochets back into that same chain space one and two and three okay so that was our second corner so what we've done here is we've created a corner of our triangle we've created a side of the triangle and then we've we come to this next corner and then we're going to create this other side so chain two and then we're going to do the same thing in this next chain space so the third chain space so that's two and three double crochets chain three and then three double crochets back into that same chain space one two and three now we'll chain two to get back across to create our third side and then as before we'll find that third chain and slip stitch into the top of that third chain okay so there we've got what's emerging to be more of a recognizable triangle okay and then we're going to move on to round three 
So for round three, you'll just start as you did before. Slip stitch into those next two stitches. One and two. And then into the chain space, but don't finish your slip stitch. Take your next color. Which for me is my light brown. And then you'll finish off that slip stitch with your new color. Just pull tight on the ends and you can snip off your, your second color tail now, which is what I'll do. It just makes it a bit easier if you snip as you go, just to tighten the, tighten the ends. But you can do it again at the end anyway, but you just want to make sure that your, your, hook, your hook loop is, is nice, and, nice and taut. So chain your three. And then we're going to start which the round which will be our repeating round. So we're going to place our th three double crochets, so which you know we've already got the chain, so just two here to start with. Chain three, and then three double crochets back in that same chain space. So this is our corner, our little corner sequence, corners of the triangle. We're going to chain two, move along to this chain space here along the side of the triangle, and we're going to place three double crochets in there. One, two, and three. And because we don't need a corner, we don't need a corner, um, we don't need a corner stitch there because it's not a corner. We're going to chain two and move along to our corner. Okay, and we're going to do that, repeat that same corner sequence. So one, two, and three double crochets, chain three, three double crochets in the same chain space to get around the corner. One, and two, and three. So those create the points of our triangle. And then we'll chain two. And we're working along this side area. So just we'll repeat what we did on this side. So three double crochets in that next chain space. One, two, and three. Chain two. And then we're back at a, at a corner space. Okay, so you're going to... I'm going to finish mine off camera. So you'll do your next corner space. So your three double crochets, chain three, three double crochets. Chain two, you're on a side area, so you'll place your three double crochets in the next chain space. And then I'll meet you once I've done that bit there. Okay, and we'll, we'll join together and start the next round. Okay, so to get back round to the beginning of this third round, we're just going to chain our two. And then we'll slip stitch into that top chain once again. So you can kind of see how this is going to go. We're just going to be slowly increasing as we move out. So each time we move out, so just make sure that your, your triangle is lying flat. So as we move out, you'll just be adding one chain space to the side areas, okay? So the size of the triangle, let's show you this one because it's easier to see. So each time, so you'll have your corner spaces in the same area and then each time, each time you, you know, increase moving outwards, you'll add an extra chain space on the sides of the triangle. And that's where you'll place your three double crochets. So let's just do one more, start one more round. And then I'll leave you to finish off. So you'll slip stitch into the next stitch. So we start each round the same way. And then into the next. And then into the chain space but don't finish off your stitch take your next color finish off the slip stitch pull tight on the tail ends snip off your previous color so I'll just snip off my light brown there And then I'll just start my next round as before. So my chain three, my 
two double crochets, chain three, and then my three double crochets, one and two and three, chain two to get to the side chain space and then I'll place my three double crochets in the next two chain spaces separated by a chain two. Okay so chain two to get to the next chain space along the edge. So you're only chaining three when you're in the corners okay so chaining two everywhere else. So one, two and three except when you're chaining for your first double crochet of course. So chain two to get so when you're on the working on the sides you've just got chain two hopefully that makes sense I'm sure it does I'm confusing it even further <laughs> so the chain three is in between the sets of, of two double of three double crochets is is only on the corners okay that's what I mean to say so keep on going do finish off this fourth fourth round and then move on to your fifth round or even you know beyond if you're making six rounds seven rounds whatever keep keep going just you're just essentially repeating round three adding a you know an extra cluster of three or an extra set of three on the sides of the triangle each time you move around okay so I'm going to continue on I'm going to finish off my next so I finish this fourth round and then move on to my fifth round and I'll meet you once I've done that. And actually I'm really sorry what I've realized that I didn't say is on your final round so um, yeah on your final round just work the first two sides okay and then I'll come back and I'll meet you when we're making this final side. So my apologies that I didn't say that before I, I paused but we want to make these two sides the same but then we're going to alter like I said the big at the beginning under the neckline just to flatten it out a little bit so once you've done your first two sides on your final round I'll meet you and we'll finish off this area together okay so I'm just placing my last set of three double crochets in this corner before we start the the side that will be the neckline and I've got Melba with me so I apologize if she starts to rattle the table which is could happen Okay, so we've, we're uh, this. This is our neckline here. Okay, so we've got. If you've got five, now you'll have to work it out for yourself. If you've got, if you've gone for more rows or less rows, um, you just want to flatten this out. So because I've got three, three uh, chain spaces along this neckline, what I'm going to do is I'll chain two, and then I'm going to half double crochet three times in that first chain space, chain two, then I'm going to single crochet into the center space, so three, three single crochets into the center space, and then into the final space I'll chain my two and I'll place my three half double crochets. Okay, so that's just how I flatten out under the neckline. Okay, so if you've got a different number of chain spaces, you might have to work it out slightly differently. So maybe you could just do, um, you know, if you just have two chains, two uh, chain spaces across the top of your neckline, just, um, you know, just do your half double crochets. That would be fine. If you've got more, so you've got four, do, you know, you could do two half double crochet spaces and then in the center the two at single crochet. So you'll just have to work that out just so you can flatten that out. And, you know, in reality, that's only optional. If you, you know, if it's going to, you, you feel like it'll sit fine using, you know, just the same as this, just doing the double crochets as before, then, then you know, go for it. I just like to flatten that off. I just feel it sits a little bit better on Melbourne if I flatten off the neckline. Okay, so I'm nearly finished this fifth round. We'll just finish off our last two chains there and then I'm going to slip stitch into the third chain. And that finishes off my round five, which is the, all the rounds that I'm doing. 
and then we're just going to as as we started off we're going to slip stitch into that first stitch into the second stitch into the chain space and this time we'll finish off that slip stitch and then we're going to start to chain for our first tie from here okay so I'm going to chain about 60 chains so you'll work out how many chains you need for your cat's neck circumference and whether you want to tie a knot, whether you want to tie a bow, you'll work that out for yourself. I'm chaining about 60 for my yarn and hook size and, and Melba's neck size. I, will, I prefer to tie a bow, um, you know, that's just my preference. So I'm going to go ahead and chain 60 and then I'll meet you once I've done that. Okay, so I've got my 60 chains there and then I'm just going to chain one extra as a turning chain. And... From there, we're just going to slip stitch one in each, uh, each chain, starting from the second chain from the hook. So you'll just slip stitch down the length of your, of your tie, all the way down. And then once you get back to here, we're just going to slip stitch into that chain space. So I'll meet you when we get back down here. Okay, so I'm just placing my last slip stitch in my first uh, first tie and then I'm just going to slip stitch back into that chain space and then I'm going to tie off by yarning over and pulling through okay and we're going to tie on to create our second tie so I'll just snip that end and then we're going to tie on in a similar way to how we've been changing color so just make sure you've got the right side if you've altered the neckline there. So we're just going to so insert your hook into the chain space, place your yarn over top of your hook, pull up a loop, and chain one. And just tighten there. And then you just create your chain from there. So one, two, three. Three, I'm going to go ahead and make my 60 chains on this side and slip stitch all the way back. So I'll see you shortly. Okay, so I'm just once again placing my last slip stitch into the end of the second tie. And then I'm going to slip stitch into the chain space. And then I'll tie off just as I did before. And snip my end. And then all we've got to do is tidy up all these ends. So just what you need to do now is just go through and just make sure that all your ends are, so the, the um, that's the magic ring, pull that nice and tight. Just make sure all those ends are pulled nice and tight. And then we're gonna further tidy it up with weaving in our ends. So I just make, go around, make sure that the all sitting well. So you'll take your darning needle. Where's mine gone? There it is. So take your darning needle and we're just going to start weaving in our ends. Let's do let's do this one here. So you just want to make sure that they're pulled well to the back and the best you can that you're disguising any noticeable part of the colour change. So you'll just thread your darning needle and I'm kind of assuming um, as usual that you know how to weave in an end but you just want to make sure that that you're you know like I said you're, you're disguising well that color change see how see how you can kind of see that color change there so what we want to do is just pull it around so you can't you can't really see it so make sure it's pulled tight enough for that to be the case and then you'll just start weaving in your tail end at the back here. So best to weave in each color to its corresponding color. So I'll just weave that in there. And I'll just double check that color change again that it's looking okay. Yep, it's looking good, okay. And now I'm just going to go back a couple of times, just weave down. I've got a nice sharp small needle here that I can get in to those stitches easily. And you can you can go back a third time as well if you want to. Probably twice is enough, but let's just go through another time. 
and then you'll just snip off snip off the excess and then you'll go ahead and you'll do that for each of your of your tail ends okay including these ones around the ties so you go ahead I'm going to um, start weaving in my all my tail ends and in any project like this where you're changing colors all the time there's there's always a few tail ends to do if you want to with your center piece and if you've used the magic ring you can just use that to sew around your ring a little bit more to close up that center area even further so yeah you go ahead and weave in all your tail ends and I'll meet you shortly okay so here's my finished bandana and how cool in retro 70s is that I love it so I'd love to see yours and how it's turned out. So send your photos along to catventurous.community at gmail.com or you can tag us on social media at catventurous.crochet. So uh, yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. I think it's pretty cool. I love this retro vibe. Um, I was born in the 70s, so I love you know anything from the 70s and I think uh, this, this retro crochet vibe is pretty cool. So, um, you know, Maybe you've done that sort of vibe. Maybe you've done a completely different vibe, which, you know, I would love to see. So please send those along if you get time. And thanks so much for being here. I really appreciate your support and hope to catch you soon. Bye. Good girl, Melba. Hi, everyone, and welcome to our video tutorial for this retro 70s cat bandana. <laughs> She's about to go. She's going. You going? Good enough? Okay. <laughs>